You know, one thing I wanted to touch on, because it hasn't been getting a lot of media coverage, or or actually a lot of correct media coverage, imagine that, is about this whole foreclosure process that's going on and what's being termed fraud closure. And the reason this is important, and I talked about this last night on our show at 6 o'clock, is simply that this is one of those things that could turn out to be something much bigger than it appears on the surface and might have, just might have, a significant impact on your investments and the markets as well as the overall economy. And this foreclosure mess up is something that is only going to get fixed quickly through government legislation to retroactively fix the fraudulent foreclosure process that was done in place. Well, let's do a quick synopsis of what has actually occurred. Homeowners can only be foreclosed on and evicted from their homes by the person or institution who actually has the loan paper. Only the note holder has legal standing to ask a court to foreclose and evict. Now, not the mortgage, the note. This is the the actual IOU. They have to have the note. And the problem here is that in a lot of cases, this has been done improperly. The whole purpose of the expediting of these mortgages was was so that the major banks, uh, Bank America, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, they could bundle these mortgages up and sell them off in tranches in terms of these what's called mortgage-backed securities. Well, the slicing and dicing created two different types of tranches out of these mortgages, the, the high-risk pools, the subprimes, those type of things, and the, low, the, the, the low-risk pools. So these various tranches were then turned around and sold to investors based upon what their risk tolerance was. They wanted to, you know, some investors wanted high risk pools of mortgages where they get a high rate of return. Others wanted much safer uh, pools of mortgages where the return was lower, but much safer in terms of the credit quality. But here's the issue. When mortgage-backed securities were first created, all the mortgages were pristine because none of them had defaulted yet. And because these were all brand new loans, statistically, some would default and some would and others wouldn't so it was you know kind of like a coin flip and if i flip a coin 500 times i'm sp- supposed to get you know 50% heads and 50% tails but in reality it doesn't actually work that way and nobody really knew at the time what the outcome would be but the problem has now become is that there are many more foreclosures than anybody actually counted on and so it's so far outside the bell curve of what they thought would happen inside of these mortgages. Some would default, some would make cured, uh, would would make good, and everything would be fine. We're so far outside that that curve, there's a real problem. So it wasn't that the riskier loans in the junior tranches and, and the safer ones in the senior tranches were good or bad. What this really comes down to is that, and here's the key issue, all these loans were in what's called a remick. And a remix is the real estate mortgage investment conduit. And from those remixes is where all these mortgage-backed securities were ultimately cut. Well, if and when a mortgage in a given bundle of mortgages defaults, the the people with the high-risk pools in these junior tranches, they're supposed to take their losses first. The senior tranche holder, the ones with the safer pool of mortgages, They take the losses last. But who were the owners of the junior tranche bond and the senior tranche bonds? Well, those are two different people. So the mortgage note was not actually signed over to the bondholder. In fact, it couldn't be signed over because, again, since no one knew which mortgage would default first, it was impossible to assign a specific mortgage to a specific bond. Now, this is where things fell off the track. This is where MERS, the Mortgage Electronic Registration System, comes into place. States require that when a mortgage is filed, it's pen on paper. MERS was a repository of digitized mortgage notes that the banks originated from actual mortgage loans signed by home buyers. Now, the problem is, is that the states don't necessarily recognize the transfer of title through MERS. So this becomes a bigger issue. The purpose of MERS was to help the securitization process by lowering costs to increase the profitability of the transaction for the banks 
and ultimately speed this process up so we could do bigger and bigger packages much quicker. So MERS was essentially where digitized notes were then sliced and diced and rearranged to create all types of mortgage-backed securities. And it's kind of like Dr. Frankenstein's operating table where the beast got put together. But legally, and this is the important part, MERS didn't hold any mortgage notes. The true owner of the mortgage notes should have been the remix, but the remix didn't own the notes either because of flukes of ratings coming out of the rating agencies. The remix had to be bankruptcy remote, and, and what that means is there, there can't be a bankruptcy issue with a remix, and that was in order to get precious ratings needed to put these mortgage-backed securities together for institutional investors. That had to be ultra-low-risk pools. And more importantly, the chain of title was broken. And where that chain of title is broken, that's where the home buyer signs a mortgage, the key document is the note, and it's an actual IOU. In order for the mortgage note to be sold or transferred to somebody else, the document has to be physically endorsed by the next person. All of those signatures on the note are called the chain of title. So you can endorse the note as many times as you want, but you have to have a clear chain of title right on the actual note. In, in this regard, for whatever reason, signatures were skipped. The chain of title was broken. So therefore, legally, the mortgage note's no longer valid. That is, the person who took out the mortgage and the loan to pay for the house technically, legally, no longer owes the loan because he doesn't know whom to pay. So the broken chain of title isn't, you know, might not have been an issue if there hadn't been this unusual number of foreclosures. Before the housing bubble collapsed, people who defaulted on their mortgages wouldn't even bother to check to see who the paper, where the paperwork was because they could just flip the house because everything was just going up and you could turn a house in about five minutes. But, as, but now, following the collapse, there's this boatload of foreclosures. There's foreclosures on a lot of people who weren't sloppy bums who skipped out on their mortgage payments, but these are smart and cautious people who got squeezed by circumstances. And these people are contesting their foreclosures and evictions, so they start looking at the chain of title issue. That's when paperwork becomes important. The chain of title is crucial. The botched paperwork becomes a non-trivial issue. Now the banks had hired these other firms, these law firms that specialize in foreclosures. Here's where the wheels come off the cart. In order to handle the massive volume of foreclosures and evictions, that occurs because of this housing crisis, the foreclosure mills were the first to spot these broken chains of titles. Well, what do you know? It turns out that these foreclosure mills may have faked and falsified documentation so as to fraudulently repair the chain of title issue, thereby proving that the banks had judicial standing to foreclose on the delinquent mortgages. Those foreclosure mills might have even forged the loan note itself. So what's the issue here? Well, the foreclosure mills did actually deliberately and categorically fake and falsify documents. They did this in order to expedite the foreclosures and evictions. Ive Smith over at Naked Capitalism, who's pretty much been on top of the story the whole way, put up a price list for this quote-unquote service from a company called DocX. What it is, it's a price list for forged documents. Talk about one-stop shopping. And, and this is where the massive fraud was actually carried out with the inevitable innocent bystanders getting caught up in the fraud. 